how you figure out how complex a weapon is is how many springs it has. The less springs, less complicated, less going to go wrong. So we're down to about four springs on this gun, I think. Kevlar on. See how things are properly done in the world, in true tactical situations, in true evolved training evolutions. So today's episode of Eric Lawrence VSS channel, we're going to shoot the PPS-43, uh, the Russian submachine gun that came after the PPS-H-41. Uh, it's all stamped sheet metal, same caliber as the PPS-H-762 uh, by 25. Uh, really a powerhouse cartridge. Um, obviously it's a, a bottleneck case, so there's some really good velocity generated out of this and uh, no nonsense. I mean, we've done some testing and, and the penetration is more than impressive. So the PPS-43, the, back in the day, Soviets wanted to make the PPS-41 or PPSH-41 cheaper, no wood. So they built this out of sheet metal and uh, I think pretty much knocked it out of the park. Great little compact submachine gun folding stock, you know, similar to the MP40, rotating butt pad, butt plate. Um, with that, we'll start with how to release the stock. The stock's not locked into the carry position, so you're always able to extend it and lock it to the rear and rotate out your butt pad, butt plate. But to uh, unlock it, you'll see there's the little locking lug down here on the, on the actual pivot point. You have to press down on this button on top. Press down on that and then rotate your stock forward and take your butt plate, flip it around, and then go over top of your rear sight. It's a pretty genius design. Obviously, you can fire it while the stock is folded. Nothing's going to impede ejection. And uh, some really fancy sheet metal uh, sling uh, mounts. They have the canvas sling with leather ends that you can run through there. So it's a decent to carry gun, too. Simple sheet metal gun. Uh, sheet metal, 35 round magazine, the 762 by 25 cartridge. Uh, some great ballistics on that. Rear sight set for 100 or 200. So it's 100, that one, and then you rotate it back and you're at 200. This cartridge is capable of, of hits at 200 and, and doing some real damage. So I wouldn't discount it like most submachine guns where I kind of scoff at a 9 mil at 200 yards. But a 762 by 25, uh, there's some juice to that. Front sight's a post, but a protected eared post. So all your adjustments are done from the front. You can either uh, drift the drum like an AK or rotate up or down the front sight to adjust it. And they do that at the factory. Guys, don't think most of these factories aren't as smart as most of the operators. They have machines they put these in. They crank them down, they shoot them, they dial this with some massive machine, and then they issue them. Going forward more, genius. They took the, a sheet metal piece, bent it over the front of the muzzle to protect the muzzle for one, but also to create a compensator. So because it's wider at the bottom than the top, as this shoots and the gas has come out, hits the front of that, it holds it down. So it holds it into the, the steady position where you're already shooting. And uh, that's fairly genius. But then they figured out the geometry of how far forward to keep the gun from recoiling to the rear. So it's compensating for rearward pressure and upward movement. So with this, once you're in a locked in position, you can you can dump the whole magazine exactly where you want within, you know, size, distance, location of target issues. But uh, also they built a uh, sheet metal heat shield around the barrel. You can shoot quite a few mags before that gets like too damn hot to hold. But worst case, wear gloves. Gloves don't blister, bleed, cut, cry. Coming back to the magazine well, uh, magazine release presses to the rear from the rear. It's protected also. They made this thing soldier proof so you could throw it around and drop it and not lose your magazines. So empty mag, empty submachine gun, locked to the rear, it's on safe. So magazines go in, obviously bullets toward bad guy, press it in to where that, that magazine catch has it, and always give it a tug to make sure. But when a right-handed person is actuating this or left I guess 
you grab the magazine, you get between those protected ears, that magazine goes in and out. There's no downside to that design. It's very ergonomic. So back to uh, obviously the charging handle is also the forward assist, but we don't use a forward assist on an open bolt submachine gun. The most accidentally fired weapons out there are open bolt machine guns of some type. People will either want to ride the bolt forward or they will uh, let it go forward and be surprised that it fires. This has a fixed firing pin on the front of the uh, bolt. So every time it shuts, on accident or on purpose, it's going to fire. So remember that. You lock it to the rear and you press it on safe when you're loading or unloading this well. So with that safety, they did this for right-handed shooter. Uh, I guess all the Soviets were right-handed. So you could bring it back with the trigger finger, but you could also press it on the fire with your trigger finger. Pretty genius system. So you'll just see the sheet metal just lifts up to block the bolt from going forward if you did press the trigger. Nothing fancy. So to clear this, obviously, we take the magazine, take the magazine out, check the chamber, nothing in the chamber, nothing in the magazine well, and you can see through here, nothing in the magazine well. And then uh, we can ride the bolt forward. So we're gonna press it on the fire, grab the charging handle, and just bring it to a uh, forward position. So with that, the Soviets were good about uh, doing spring-assisted locks to uh, shut the weapons and keep them shutted. So on the rear of the pistol grip here, you press in on that and rotate down the, the lower, and you'll actually see how the sear is depressed when the trigger is pressed to the rear. So the same springs that hold the top cover to the lower is the same op rod and recoil spring that actually is the, the spring for the sear. There's no wasted parts on this. How you figure out how complex a weapon is is how many springs it has. The less springs, less complicated, less going to go wrong. So we're down to about four springs on this gun, I think. So that's your lower. And you can see when I press up on the safety, or back on the safety, it comes and it just rotates that little slot. And it brings that up in there. It will block your uh, actual bolt from going forward. So let's shoot this and, uh, you know, start the smiles. This is what creates smiles. No one ever is displeased after getting to fire a, a Russian submachine gun. So let's do that next. So now we're going to go ahead and load up the uh, PPS 43, have the bolt to the rear, the safety engaged, bullets toward bad guy, press it in the magazine well, give it a tug, make sure it's locked in. Then the only thing we have to do is point at our target, get your sights aligned, press off on the, the safety, and start making some fun. So to disassemble this, it's very complicated. You have to lift up on the bolt and lift it out. It, it, let me show you that again, I mean, for the slow runners. Okay, ooh, yeah, it actually can cause blood too. Watch that edge. So we lift up on the, on the uh, hot panel, press it out, terrible. Then you can hold it up and the actual ejector, op rod, and spring buffer assembly falls off of the actual bolt carrier that's very dirty right now so I'll show you another genius part of this weapon system so when it operates and it the bolts going to the rear from a firing this the op rod actually is your uh, ejector that hits the base of the case on the face of the bolt to throw it out of the weapon system so that's about as simple as it gets. So I think we'll need to clean that one a little bit. I don't know. Maybe my trusty handler, Scott, will help me with that. Um, so once we've cleaned it, or simulated we cleaned it, put the uh, assembly back together there. Make sure your tombstone buffer is uh, rounded to the top, flat on the bottom. 
press the two up and then back and in. Just rotate your lower. Press in on the button until it locks. And there you go. So once again, anytime we've taken one apart or cleaned it or, or reassembled it, uh, we're going to do a functions check. So since it's an open bolt weapon, we're going to bring the bolt to the rear and press it on safe. This is no semi-auto on this. It's just semi or uh, full auto. So with that, the safety is going to be on. We'll attempt to fire. The bolt will not go forward. We'll press it on to fire. Hold the uh, rod. Press the trigger. And hold it to the rear as long as you're holding the trigger to prove that the uh, sear is working. Then release the trigger and it locks on the sear. And for storage, go ahead and you know press the bolt to the rear, press the trigger, and ride it forward. It's a very simple gun, but very effective. Uh, I've seen them in quite a few different countries. Uh, a lot in Africa. You know, obviously the Russians used to pass these out like candy in the 60s and 70s from all their World War II war stock. And uh, you'll see them in the Korean War Museums. Obviously, they, they gave a lot of these to the North Koreans. But great gun. Uh, if you get a chance to shoot it, you know, rent one or buy the semi-auto version of the pistol, you can do that. That's a fun option also. And... Uh, Get out and shoot. So that was a PPS 43. Great rate of fire. Love holding it. And uh, you can shoot through cars with it pretty much, except for engine blocks, obviously, but it'll perforate both sides of the car easily. So if you like these types of videos, you know, do the hit the like, hit the subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and we'll get more unique weapons out as soon as we can. See you later. For more videos on safety, military methods, security training, and tactics, and weapons handling, don't forget to subscribe to Eric Lawrence VSS and visit eric-lawrence.com for more info. Don't forget to visit the shop.vig-sec.com for products and merch that I carry.